Hi, everyone. I'm Paul LaFever, the Zojo Developer Evangelist. And this time, I'm here to talk to you about the singleton and factory design patterns. So before we dive into those two design patterns, just a brief overview of what design patterns are in general. And this is the Wikipedia definition. A software design pattern is a general reusable solution to a commonly occurring problem within a given context in software design. Nice and wordy, like those computer scientists like to do. These are concepts, not specific implementations. So the concept can be implemented in several different ways, typically, and obviously in whatever language. Uh, but the important things to understand the overall concept they first came to prominence in the book Design Patterns, appropriately named, in 1994. And these two patterns, Singleton and Factory, are in the creational section of the book. So we'll start with a simple one. And what is the Singleton pattern? And this pattern enforces that only a single instance of a class can be created. It's pretty focused. It's pretty simple. You do want to use this pattern carefully, as some have uh, felt that it can become an anti-pattern, which is generally something you don't want to do. Uh, there are certainly useful situations for a singleton, but you don't want to go crazy and make all kinds of things singletons. Uh, that, that can lead to some code that's less than desirable, because you're essentially going to be making a lot of stuff global when you do that. And as we all should know, too many things that are global makes it hard to write code that is easy to maintain. Now, if you use Zojo before, you should be aware there's a concept called a module that allows you to put code in it. And a module is not a class. So the singleton pattern is not quite the same as a module, although they can be a little bit similar. But the singleton is an actual class that can only have one instance. And a module is not a class at all. It's just a container for code and properties and whatnot. And there's one example of a singleton class in the Zojo framework. It's in the iOS framework. The iOS motion class has a method on it called, I believe, get object that returns the singleton instance to use for detecting the motion of your iOS device. And you can read more about singleton on Wikipedia, of course. There's the URL. And the factory pattern, this one is not quite as simple as the singleton. And this essentially is when you use a method to create an object without having to specify the exact type. And this allows you to avoid having to call the constructor and then having to use new to get a, a new object, essentially. And it's useful in situations where you do have a bunch of objects that are related to each other in some way, and you want to get uh, different versions of those objects, but you don't want to have your code constantly uh, using new and different constructors to figure out which type of thing you want to get back. You can just call the factory and tell it what you want to get instead. And of course, that is written up on Wikipedia. There's the URL. So let's take a look at how some of the code that is on those two Wikipedia pages looks like in Zojo. So here is a singleton example. And all of these examples for singleton often look uh, pretty much the same. So what I decided to do here was to take an example of something in Zojo that probably should be a singleton but isn't, and see how it might look if it were. And in this case, it's the random class. The random class uh, generates random numbers. And in the documentation, somewhere in there, it notes that you probably should only have one instance of this declared. So you shouldn't create a bunch of new random objects throughout your app in order to generate random numbers. You should just have one. Unfortunately, the Zojo class does not enforce that in any way. So you can create new random uh, instances all over the place if you wanted to. 
My understanding is the reason that's the case is because the random class was added to Zojo before Zojo had shared methods, which is a technique you use to create a singleton. So let's look here at this singleton. I've created a class, it's just called random singleton to say that it's gonna be a version of random, but a singleton. And the important things you do with singleton are these steps. First thing you do is you add a constructor method and you make it private. This immediately means that you cannot create a new instance of the singleton from outside the class. Or you cannot create a new instance of this class from outside the class. So uh, right now you've created a, a nothington, essentially. You can't create any instances of it. So how can we have an instance of it? Well, we'll have two things here. We're going to have a shared property and we're going to have a method. The shared property is uh, in this case going to track what it is we actually are uh, instantiating, which is going to be the Zojo random class. If this were your own uh, uh, class that you wanted to do the singleton on, then this type would be the type of the class itself. But the important thing here is the little bit of code that's in get object. And you just check if your property is nil, which means nothing has been instantiated yet. And then you instantiate it using the new keyword here. And then from this point forward, you always return the single instance that you have, thus singleton. So in this case, anytime you wanted to get access to the random objects, you would just do random singleton dot get object. And you can see it looks something like that. And that's how this particular singleton would work. And again, as I mentioned, you, you only really want to use this when it's truly something that should only have a single instance. Uh, in many cases, that might be uh, you know something that's coming from the operating system, such as in this case, the random numbers. Uh, on iOS, the motion information is uh, an actual singleton in uh, the iOS framework. So things like that. But there could be other things where you only want to ensure there's a single instance. Uh, you could maybe set it up for database connection. Could be a, a valid use, I suppose. Uh, but you know, just think about that and uh, use it where it makes sense for your projects. Uh, so that's it for Singleton. Uh, let's jump into Factory. I got a few different examples there. Uh, this is an implementation of an example that's actually on the Wikipedia page. And essentially, looking here at the code, we're able to call our factory to get a person of type urban or type rural. So if I run this, and you click the button, it'll return back the description for the type of person we created. So when you set up a, a singleton, you need a way to relate, uh, uh, sorry, when you set up a factory, you need a way to relate uh, your classes. In this particular case, I'm using an interface because that's how the code on the Wikipedia page worked. So I created a, an interface here, I called it person, and it has on it a single method that returns a string. And interfaces don't have any code or anything, they're just a bunch of method definitions, and that's all this one has. And then I have two classes, builder and city person, and they both implement that interface. So you can see that's the one that's checked here. And if I expand those, you'll see they both have the get name method on it, and they just return code to indicate which is which. And the final step of the factory is actually creating the factory class itself. And typically you're gonna use an enumeration that identifies the types of the things you wanna be able to get. And then you have a method that does the creation of the appropriate object. So here you can see the get person method takes as input one of the enumeration types and returns a person, which is the interface. And because it's returning the person interface, that means it can be a villager or it can be a city person. So here there's just a select case that checks the type and then creates the new class appropriately based on the type. 
And if you pass in one that does not match the type, which you can't really do with an uh, enumeration as it's defined right now, because it only has two types in it and you'd get a compile error if you tried something else. But if you did say add a new type, but didn't uh, implement any code, we raised the unsupported operation exception. So that's how you set up a factory. The, uh, you know, the usages for apps that need to have objects that can vary depending on a particular situation. And you don't want to have littered throughout your code uh, a bunch of places where it's, you know, trying to determine what type of object to create and calling different constructors and that sort of thing. You can have this all set up right here. And like I said, this is one of the examples on the Wikipedia page. We take a look here at the next one, Product Factory. This is also on the Wikipedia page. And this is kind of an extension of the prior example. So you can see it's got kind of the same structure here. There's an interface called Product. In this case, there are two methods on this one. Uh, one for getting and one uh, the name and one for setting the price. And this just has a single class here that is uh, implementing those two methods. Uh, but the, the difference is this is demonstrating is that there are actually two factories. So there's the main factory that doesn't really do anything. Its intent is to pass the creation down to a subclass of the factory. So you can see here it has a get object method uh, that you can call but it's just calling the make product method, which is abstract, so no code on the, the superclass here. But phone product factory, which is a subclass, has make product on it. And there it has the code on it to create the new phone, actually run some initialization code, and then return the new instance that it created. And this technique is uh, described to, you know, kind of keep clean up the clutter of if you use the initial technique with a switch statement that had a bunch of uh, select cases for, you know, each various type. Uh, you could instead go with this particular design so that you didn't have, uh, say, a giant method with a, with a giant select case. You could have a, essentially a bunch of subclasses. Uh, but... Uh, Obviously, the first design is a little simpler if your factory doesn't need to be uh, too complicated with lots of different types to deal with. All right, I got a question here from Edwin. Is calling subclasses considered factory as well? For instance, a uh, person is a class. Villager could be a subclass of person as well as city person. And yeah, I think if that question... I'm understanding that. I think it's kind of saying, can you use subclasses instead of an interface maybe to implement a factory? And yes, absolutely, which is the next example I have here. This example is actually included with Zojo in the examples folder. There's a design patterns folder and this example's from there. And you can see how this one is structured. There's no interface in the project. There is just these four classes. And pizza, in this case, is the superclass. And then these other pizza types all inherit from pizza. So that works the same way as using an interface. The, uh, the method here to create the, uh, the instance still has a select case still is you know creating the new instance this way in this particular case it's creating the new instance of what it needs and it's able to return it because these are related using inheritance instead of related using interfaces i'm not going to tell you which one is better i don't know if one is necessarily better than the other they're just like i said earlier at the beginning two different ways to implement the same pattern the results are largely the same um, and if you run this, you can see here. The same, it's called the same way. You uh, 
call in this case, call the shared method on the, on the base class, telling it what type of pizza to create. And it uh, each time gets the appropriate pizza type and tells you the price. All right, so that's these two classes uh, here showing how to implement these two patterns for singleton and factory. So let's switch back. All right, so some resources to help you with Zojo in general and more about design patterns if you're interested. Uh, first of all, you can always grab the latest version of Zojo from zojo.com slash download. Current version is 2018 release four. If you want to be notified when new videos are posted, you can go to youtube.com slash go Zojo, log into YouTube and then click the subscribe button. And whenever new videos get uploaded, you'll get a notification. If you're new to Zojo or programming, check out zojo.com slash learn for our free book. And I also always encourage people to head over to our user community at forum.zojo.com. Great place to search if you have questions, ask a question, or if you have a bit more experience, answer questions. docs.zojo.com has all the latest documentation. And Zojo includes several example design pattern projects. You can find the Singleton project, factory project, and others in that folder. And there are a few blog posts that we've done on various fact, uh, sorry, various design patterns. Uh, there is a blog post on the Singleton and also on a different design pattern called Observer. I have a two-part blog post on that. I also did a YouTube video on the Observer pattern last year. I'll make sure there's a link to that in the notes for this video. And of course, the main books that people tend to refer to when it comes to design patterns is the original design patterns book from 1994. And then this Follow-up head-first design patterns is also highly regarded and worth checking out. It's 2019, and that means the Zojo Developer Conference is coming up soon. This year, it is May 1st to 3rd in Miami, Florida. You can find out more at zojo.com slash xdc and there you'll be able to check out the session schedule, which is now available. And if you're already registered, I believe an email went out very, very recently to let you know that the XDC app in the iOS app store is now available to download, which has the full session schedule and allows you to mark favorites and things you want to attend and lots of other stuff in it as well. So be sure to look around for that. And also as a special, all the way up to XTC, May 1st to 3rd, you can purchase XTC videos from our prior Sojo Developer Conferences at a steep discount. So you can get the 2016 videos for only $75 and last year's 2018 videos for $99. These, uh, these video packages have 30 to 35 videos from the XTC conference. And if, you're, uh, if you haven't decided to come to XDC 2019, uh, remember that your admission includes the video recordings. And if you're thinking about it, you can um, grab one of these video sets and see what it's like. The last two conferences were in Denver in 2018 and Houston, I believe, in 2016. All right, and before, oh, you can see my contact info here if you have any questions on this or other Zojo-related topic, 
products. And speaking of that, Jay has a question on what's the main benefit of using a factory design versus ordinary object-oriented programming? Well, factory design is part of object-oriented programming. Uh, the benefit is just, it's essentially code uh, isolation. Uh, you essentially are putting the creation of your objects in a consolidated place so that you don't have to do the normal news with the constructors and have that kind of scattered about throughout your code. Uh, it's particularly relevant if your code has a fair amount of initialization work or other special case things that you might end up having to repeat. Uh, you can see more on the Wikipedia page. They have a few other examples there, but th that's the primary thing. Uh, a lot of these patterns are just about, uh, you know, making your code a little more maintainable, making sure stuff's organized better, that sort of thing. So paul at zojo.com is how you can reach me via email. And of course on Twitter, at Lefevre or at Zojo. I want to thank everyone for watching. Have a great day. <laughs>